Is it too late to stop drinking? If you or someone you love is a heavy drinker, this question is at the forefront of your mind. Even if the drinker stops, will their body and mind heal? Or is the damage from drinking permanent? Is quitting even worth it in that case? Or is it too late to bother? As a doctor treating people with addiction, these are common questions. Thankfully, we know the answers, and today, I'll share them with you. Whether you're a heavy drinker yourself, or you need to know for a friend or family member, stay tuned to learn the surprising truth. As always, I'm your host, Dr. Jack Nagichi, YouTube's addiction medicine physician. Welcome back to the channel. Remember to hit like and subscribe. By clicking those buttons, you're telling the algorithm that you want quality content, which helps spread our message of recovery to more people. I appreciate your support. It's well known that alcohol impairs brain function. People who drink heavily have more difficulty making and recalling memories and a decreased ability to reason and process information. You may have heard that alcohol kills brain cells, but is this true? Well, yes and no. Yes in the fact that heavy drinking can lead to early onset dementia and the nutritional deficits from drinking can cause a disease called Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome. This brain damage is typically permanent. Thankfully, most heavy drinkers do not have Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome or alcohol-induced dementia. If a drinker has not developed permanent brain damage, the best scientific evidence shows that their brain function will improve once they quit alcohol. For some brain functions, this occurs rapidly as is the case for tasks related to general IQ and the recall of old memories, such as vocabulary. These functions can return to normal within days to weeks of sobriety. Cognitive processes that rely on processing new information take longer to recover. In general, younger and healthier people recover faster, often within two to three weeks of quitting booze. Those who drink for longer or more heavily will need longer to heal their brain. It may take months or years of sobriety for older drinkers to return to normal. Some will experience ongoing cognitive deficits, but almost all experience improvement once they quit. Unfortunately, the brains of recovering alcoholics seem to be more sensitive to the brain damaging effects of alcohol. If an alcoholic returns to drinking, even modest drinking, they will experience more cognitive impairment than someone who never had alcohol use disorder. This is all the more reason to remain sober from alcohol. Everybody knows that heavy drinking damages the liver. Liver damage is a common cause of concern for both people who are actively drinking and those in recovery. I understand the worry, as I have witnessed countless cases of end-stage liver failure, and believe me, it's not a pretty way to go. Heavy drinking must cause permanent liver damage then, right? Well, let's talk about that. First, you need to understand the stages of liver injury, which progress in an orderly fashion. The first stage is steatosis, also known as fatty liver disease. The damage from alcohol and its metabolites harm the liver cells, and in response, these cells begin to accumulate fat. These changes begin after only two to three weeks of heavy drinking, and more or less, all alcoholics have some degree of steatosis. Most people with steatosis have no symptoms or mild symptoms like nausea, pain in the right upper abdomen, or fatigue. The liver still functions at this stage, and steatosis can only be detected with specialized medical tests. With continued heavy drinking, 20 to 40% of people with steatosis will progress to the second stage, steatohepatitis. In this stage, the liver becomes inflamed and the inflammation results in actual damage. The liver cells swell and then die. Doctors can detect this inflammation using blood work to measure liver enzyme levels and imaging tests like ultrasound to see the abnormal tissue directly. Thankfully, the liver has remarkable regeneration capabilities and can replace these dying cells with new ones. This is why people who donate a portion of their liver to another person are able to do so. The two pieces will regenerate into two mostly normal sized livers. However, this regeneration is only possible for so long. Eventually, the liver runs out of cells to repair the damage and begins to develop scar tissue instead. 
this scar tissue cannot perform the roles of the liver cells that it replaces. Once the liver has developed enough scar tissue to decrease its function, the person begins to experience the symptoms of liver failure. We call this third stage of liver damage cirrhosis. By this time, the illness is obvious to most doctors based off the patient's appearance and complaints. But we can verify the diagnosis with blood tests and imaging studies. Cirrhosis is a miserable disease with no cure besides a liver transplant. It can be managed with medications, but it is always fatal without transplant. The good news is that the liver can heal if a person stops drinking before they develop cirrhosis. As I stated previously, the liver has unique regenerative properties compared to most other organs. Scientific research shows that the first stage of liver damage, steatosis, resolves within two to three weeks of quitting alcohol. As long as they avoid alcohol, these people don't have to fear liver failure. Amazingly, people with steatohepatitis, the second stage of liver damage, also show improvement in signs of liver inflammation, beginning only two weeks after they stop drinking as well. They will always carry damage from liver scar tissue, but abstinence prevents progression to cirrhosis. Even people with alcoholic cirrhosis can benefit from quitting. Liver failure patients who quit drinking live longer than those who continue. Sobriety and participation in treatment for alcohol use disorder are also mandatory if the person wants to receive a liver transplant. Contrary to popular belief, people with alcoholism can and do receive liver transplants, provided they can remain sober from alcohol use and that they show active engagement in medical care. Alcohol harms the body in countless other ways, but brain and liver damage are the most feared complications and that's why I discussed them in this video. If you're interested in learning more about healing from alcohol, check out the National Institute on Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism's website, where you can find scientifically vetted information to answer all your questions. If you want to learn about other complications of alcohol use, check out my video on the researchers who proved that DTs were caused by alcohol withdrawal. The story is actually quite wild. I want this video to serve as a source of hope. Regardless of how long you've been a drinker, it's never too late for recovery. If you or someone that you love is suffering from alcoholism or any other problematic substance use and is seeking help, visit my website at ntehealth.com where you can read more and book a discovery call to talk with me. The call and initial evaluation are both free, so you have nothing to lose. Till we meet again, bye-bye.